This is exactly what I did to publish my first paper in a Scopus Index journal. And in this video, I'll walk you through step by step how I chose the topic for this paper, how I wrote it, and how I chose the right journal so that you can just copy me and publish your next paper in a Scopus Index journal. And as a bonus, I'll also share with you how this paper became my most cited paper with 15,636 downloads and 133 citations, which boosted my authority and helped me to get better academic positions. The first thing you need to publish in a Scopus Index journal is a really, really good topic. You need to be different and stand out from the crowd of other researchers. And you do that by not doing what everybody else is doing. At that time, almost everybody in my field seems to have been focusing on the strengths and weaknesses of native and non-native speakers as perceived by students. And most studies would basically interview students or survey them to find out what the perceptions were. If I did that, my paper would be basically unpublishable even before I started writing it. So instead, with my co-author, what we decided to do was look outside of our discipline for impactful topic and look at ways that other researchers in other disciplines were approaching similar topics. And it allowed us to find a completely new angle to our topic and use a methodology that had never been used before in our field. And the paper did so well that it has been downloaded 15,636 times so far and it's my most cited paper ever. So when you're looking for a new topic, do not follow the crowd. Do something different. Look outside of your discipline for novel ideas that nobody else in your field can truly see. And in a second, I'll also share with you the secret ingredient to getting more citations that will boost your authority in your field. But before we do that, what you need to do next is be able to conduct the study get the data and analyze it. When we were writing the paper back in 2015, I knew very little, next to nothing, about my research. I hadn't done any papers before, I had finished my bachelor's degree, only recently started my PhD. So it really pays off to follow an approach that those who know more about research also follow. In here, it doesn't pay off to be different at all. So initially, we weren't sure how the methodology that we discovered in another field to approach our topic would work in our field. So we read about 10 papers that use that methodology in other fields to understand how the methodology should be conducted. We looked at the sample size, we looked at the research procedures, we looked at the research tools that were used, how the data was collected, how the data was analyzed, and also how the data was then presented in the results section. That way you cannot really get it wrong with your methodology because you're doing something that has already been validated by many other researchers. So if you're unsure how to conduct your study, look at how other researchers have used that methodology to study their topics. But of course, none of this will get you published unless you know how to package your work really, really well. Why? Because we all judge the book by its cover, or in this case, the paper. In fact, first impressions are formed within milliseconds. That's much faster than a blink of an eye. And journal reviewers are no different. They will form first impressions, either positive or negative, about your paper very, very quickly. And even though they will, of course, read your paper in more detail afterwards, research clearly shows that it's very difficult to turn a negative first impression into a positive one because it really stays and subconsciously tints how you view the rest of the paper. And research also shows that first impressions are much more positive when the thing matches our expectations. So what the reviewers are really looking for when forming the first positive or negative impression of your paper is a known pattern. You see, over many years of reviewing papers, they formed a mental image of what a good paper should look like and what a bad paper looks like. That's why it doesn't pay off to be different here. What you want to do is fit in that known pattern and that expectation that the reviewer has for your paper. And you can do that in two main ways. 
First of all, you structure your paper in a way that is expected of you by the reviewers in that particular journal. And second of all, you express your research ideas in a way that is expected by the reviewers of that particular journal. The more you fit in here, the better, because you will immediately be associated with other published researchers who have successfully published papers in high impact journals. So how do you actually apply this in practice? Well, first of all, you want to study how published researchers structure their papers in that particular journal that you're targeting or more broadly in the top journals in your discipline. So download five to 10 papers and then look at the structure. What sections do they have? Do they have a literature review section, an introduction, discussion and results? And then map out what they do specifically in each of those sections. How does the introduction start? What does the person do in the middle? What do they do on the, at the end? Map out the length of each section. Essentially, what you're trying to do here is create a blueprint like this one which will make your writing much, much faster, but also much more accurate, really increasing the chances of publishing your paper in top journals. And fortunately, we've already done the hard work for you and we've prepared a blueprint like this after reading hundreds and hundreds of papers from our clients after publishing papers ourselves and after analyzing hundreds of papers in top journals. And you can download this proven blueprint for free if you head to our free community. The link is in the description to this video. And then you go to the community feed and you will see that blueprint pinned there and you can download it completely for free. So the first way in which you fit the reviewer's expectations to have an awesome first impression is through the structure. But the second element is the language. So what you want to do once you have the blueprint is to analyze how published researchers actually express certain research ideas. For example, how do they express the research gap? How do they highlight the novelty of the study? What phrases do they use to compare the results with previous studies? And how do they interpret their findings? And you just want to write down the most common phrases that you're seeing. This again will immediately elevate the quality of your paper, give you confidence because you will know you're expressing your research ideas precisely, concisely in appropriate scientific language, and it will fit your paper with the expectations that the reviewer has, which means it will have an awesome first impression and your chances of it getting a positive review will skyrocket. So at this stage, you have a paper written on a great topic, but it can still be rejected if you get this step wrong. To illustrate, imagine you've been invited to a fancy dinner at a fancy restaurant. Would you wear this or this? Unless you want to stand out like a sore thumb, you probably wouldn't wear flip-flops and a t-shirt and shorts, right? On the other hand, if your friends invited you to a beach in Costa Rica to go surfing, you'd much better off not wearing a fancy tuxedo and a jacket. Well, unless you want to sweat a lot you'd probably wear flip-flops and shorts. What does this have to do with publishing papers? Think of the event that you're going, like the fancy restaurant or surfing at a beach in Costa Rica, like your written paper. It's predefined and we know what the conditions of that event are like. So what you need to do then is find the right clothes that will fit that specific event. This is equivalent to finding the right journal. If you show up to a fancy restaurant in shorts and flip-flops, you will stand out, but not in a good way. Similarly, if you submit your research paper to a fancy journal that doesn't suit the study, the paper will also stand out, but not in a good way at all. And it will probably be rejected immediately without ever being sent to reviewers. So how do you choose the right journal to get published in without rejections? Well, what you want to do is look at your reference list and note down all the journals that you have been referring to in that reference list. And then you want to see which journals you have referred to most frequently. And then make a list of three to five journals that you have referred to most frequently and then go to their website to see what's the scope of the journal. What is the journal about? Does your topic fit that journal? What studies do they accept? Do they accept review papers or just experimental papers? Do they want experimental studies, observational studies? What methodology do they want to see? Do they want qualitative studies, quantitative studies? And then narrow down the list to three journals 
that you think your paper is a really good fit for. You can then look at the impact factors, publishing time, whether they're open access or not, and pick your first choice and submit your paper there. But before you hit that submit button, there's a really, really important thing that I want you to consider. And this is the secret ingredient that allowed my paper to be downloaded 15,636 times and to get over 130 citations. Before I reveal that secret to you, you might be wondering why are those downloads and citations so important? Well, that's the true currency of academia. That's what allows you to become an authority in your field. That's what really increases your chances of getting tenure. You also get better academic opportunities. You get better chances of getting really good grants. And it will also allow you to make a real impact with your research on science and on society. But did you know that a study by Nature revealed that 70% of papers are cited fewer than nine times? And 50% of published papers are not cited at all, like ever? Never. So even though you published your paper in a Scopus Index journal, it might still mean it's not cited at all, which means your study is making zero impact and your chances of becoming an authority in your field, making real impact with your research, getting tenure, are really going down very, very fast. So now that you understand why citations are so important, how can you get more citations with your papers? The secret is to make your papers open access. Most journals lock papers behind a really hefty fee, and there are literally hundreds of thousands of researchers who don't have the means or whose universities do not subscribe to those journals and therefore these hundreds of thousands of researchers cannot access your papers, which means they cannot read them, let alone cite them in the work. So if you publish in such a journal, even if it's a really high impact journal, you're really limiting your paper to a handful of researchers who actually have access to that journal. Fewer researchers accessing your paper means fewer researchers reading it and fewer citations which means less authority less chances of getting tenure and less impact on science and society so before you choose the journal where to submit it to i would really encourage you to go with open access journals now that you've published one paper congratulations you might want to publish some more papers but to do that you will need a proven system that allows you to regularly publish papers in top journals in your field so watch this next video where i reveal that exact system